With Corey Lindsley likely retiring, the Chargers have a giant hole in the middle of their offensive line, but they took a step towards filling it, bringing in center Bradley Bozeman, who at the very least gives them a capable starter with experience in Greg Roman's offense. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogmeyer. We've been covering the Chargers together now for eight seasons, but this is our sixth year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Well, Daniel, with Brendan Hymas, the only center on the Chargers roster, they had to bring in a veteran presence, and they were able to do that, bringing in Bradley Bozeman. And one of the best parts is it does not affect the comp pick formula for the Chargers. Joe Hortiz strikes again. And then we're going to get into some buyer sales like Mike Williams does not look like he's coming back. And did the Chargers get enough compensation for Keenan Allen in the trade? Yeah, I mean, that's a great buy or sell there, and we have much more to get to, including for Bradley Bozeman. A lot of people have been sharing a lot of things, and I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't be so alarmed by some of the stats you see out there, specifically regarding his pass protection. But it is a Chargers buy or sell, getting into the biggest storylines and overreactions. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your first purchase. David Center was one of the things we knew the Chargers not only had to address, but had to address in free agency before they even got to the draft. And who they ended up going with is the guy that we thought they would go with all along. If you're trying to wonder who is going to sign, look for the connections. And one of the biggest connections the Chargers' new coaching staff had was with Bradley Bozeman, who spent time with Greg Roman for four seasons with the Ravens, someone he is very familiar with, and someone who started a ton of games at center. And David, this is a signing that I like, at least as far as you needed someone to go fill this spot you can't go into the draft absolutely needing your start or out of it. And this is someone that brings in, I think, a high floor and someone at the position you can feel good about for a short term. I agree. I think this move did not surprise me at all. I feel like the connections made a lot of sense. Uh, as a guy that played for Greg Roman for a couple of years in Baltimore, obviously uh, Joe Ortiz was there in Baltimore as well. So the connections made a lot of sense. And the Chargers needed someone who was going to bring a veteran presence to the middle of the offensive line. They just absolutely simply could not go into the draft without adding a veteran. And they bring in a guy who has uh, you know six years of experience and over 2,000 snaps uh, playing center and playing guard in the NFL. So a guy that brings some versatility, brings that veteran presence, a leadership, uh, I think that it was desperately lacking and missing from the Chargers offensive line. Yeah, with Will Clapp obviously having to take over for most of the season last year with Corey Lindsley having to surprisingly end his year early last year because of medical reasons. And Bradley Bozeman, that is one thing you're getting is durability. The dude's played 16 plus games in every year since 2019. And then he has 77 starts under his belt. Talking about the experience that he brings to the table has you know, doesn't count against the comp pick formula like you talked about, which is great because I know Joe Ortiz is trying to hoard as many comp picks as possible. But at least as far as a short term basis, I think this is a great pick. This is a bridge pick. This is someone who's going to get you. Maybe you let somebody season under him a little bit, gives you some flexibility in the draft where you don't feel like you have to spend a top, you know, one or two round picks on a center because you have someone that you feel good about and can let somebody, you know, teach somebody underneath them. So I like this move a lot. And I think the one thing that I keep seeing out there is eight sacks allowed, right? Eight sacks allowed last year is bad. He wasn't great. Part of this is you hoping that he can get back to where he was under Greg Roman, right? This is the thing though. It's not as bad as it looks. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. And it's because Bryce Young is the worst quarterback or was the worst quarterback last year as far as escaping pressure and pressures turning into sacks. He was the worst quarterback at avoiding sacks in the NFL. Out of 30 quarterbacks with at least 300 dropbacks, he was number one as far as the highest percentage of the pressures he had turning into sacks. And I'm going to give you a way to think about this in Chargers terms. Last year, Will Clapp, right? He gave up one sack, right, on 24 pressures. That means only one of the 24 pressures he allowed actually turned into a sack, 
right? If you took that and gave it to the percentage of Bradley Bozeman, Bradley Bozeman did give up eight sacks. He only gave up 32 pressures. But what it means is, is 25% of the pressures that he gave up turned directly into sacks. If Will Clapp had that last year, instead of one sack, if Justin Herbert wasn't so good at avoiding sacks, Will Clapp would have given up six sacks, right? So Bryce Young really, really hurt them in that regard. It looks much worse because of Bryce Young being a rookie, taking the ninth most time in the NFL last year to throw the ball, and also having the highest pressure to sack percentage in the NFL. That, I think, David, makes me feel a little bit better about some of these bad numbers that you're seeing in pass protection. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an excellent point, and, and it makes sense when you bring up, you know, Justin Herbert and his ability to evade the rush and his, you know, really natural feel of being able to slide and move in the pocket yeah. and his athleticism. Like, Justin Herbert is exceptionally good at creating more time and being able to unleash, you know, some laser throws that other quarterbacks just simply can't do, and that's what I think makes you know, me feel a little bit better about this move. And also, like, b before last year, it was eight sacks and, and 32 pressures. His previous high was was four sacks and 23 pressures. So, like, I mean, I think that was, you know, more indicative of the rookie quarterback that he's playing with more so than, you know, what he does on a year in and year in and year out basis. So it, it doesn't really uh, scare me too much. Uh, obviously it's not something that's super ideal coming from an all pro who, you know, didn't really give up any sacks ever, yeah. uh, with Corey Lindsley, but I mean, beggars can't be choosers. You don't have the type of money to be able to bring in a, a Connor Williams or, uh, you know, a Lloyd, a Lloyd Cushenberry like sure. you did when you were able to, to bring in Corey Lindsley, you, you have to go out there and make do with the, the money that you have. And I feel like this was a smart the smart signing that's going to help the guards around him too because he understands the the rushing schemes that they're about to deploy yeah and i think what you're hoping for is even if he can just get back to what he was under greg roman because that is a lot of the signings that we're seeing one thing they have in common is they played a lot better under greg roman and had their best yeah. seasons in a lot of cases under greg roman and in the last two years the bradley bozeman was the center for greg roman he only allowed five sacks and 40 pressures over a span of two seasons. And the thing is, is like, David, we've been craving mediocrity. Even if you just could have gotten mediocre play from Will Clapp last season, you would have been fine with it. Yeah. But this thing, the thing is, is I, I, I absolutely think he can get back to an average level of pass protection. And I don't think that's saying very much. Like, I definitely think he can do that with a quarterback who's better at avoiding sacks. And I think the other thing is, is unlike Will Clapp, he at least comes with a specialty because he is a, a very, very good run blocker and fits the physical identity that Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh are trying to build for this offense. Yeah, he definitely brings an attitude. Per, per PFF, Bradley Bozeman's 71.6 run blocking grade since 2021 is the 11th highest amongst centers over that period. Uh, this is a guy that is a large man, too. I mean, he's uh, he's like he's six, six, three, uh, 315 pounds. So he, he's a monster in, in the middle of the offensive line. And he, he brings that attitude. He, he wants to run block. He, he wants to get downhill. He said in, in uh, you know, in the article where he got signed from Chargers.com, I've always loved being on, on a downhill running team. Just come in and run the football. That's what Giro likes to do. <laughs> He'll be balanced as well, but I think he brings a great overall feel for it. Just excited to get back to some smash mouth football. And I mean, hey, that's everything that Joe Hortiz has been saying. Jim Harbaugh has been saying. Greg Roman's been saying Gira. they want to go downhill. They want to run through the defenders. That is what I want to see. And this is a guy that's going to help in that effort. Yeah, and has been really good at it. I mean, you talked about the last three years in that clip from the Chargers.com, Eric Smith, that article he put out with the, you know, since 2021, the 11th best. We're talking about borderline top 10 run blockers since 2021. That's great. He's been an above average run blocker in every year of his six years in the yeah. NFL. So at least he comes with a specialty. At least you know he helps you in one regard, right? Because he's better not only than Will Clapp was at run blocking, but even than Corey Lindsley was last year, you know, probably not 100% because of what he was dealing with, but better than both of those guys as far as run blocking goes. So I think this is a place where you could find, hey, that is a plus right there. What does he do? He's cheap. He doesn't count against the compensatory formula. We think he has a much better regression to the mean, what his averages are in pass protection. And we're getting someone that fits exactly what we want to do. Check, check, check. Not coming in for a lot of money either. 
that's great. So I know you can bring up bad and like certain specific numbers and say, this guy's really bad. Look at this. But I'm telling you, this is a solid addition, a pretty high floor that you're getting, and you know exactly what you're going to get. I really like this signing, and I do think it gives you flexibility going forward, even if it might not seem as exciting on the surface. But it is Chargers by herself. We do have more to get into, including I know a lot of people are holding on to the dream that Mike Williams might be back with the Chargers, but I don't think it's happening. So we're going to get into exactly why and if the Chargers got enough for Keenan Allen back in that trade and more on today's Locked on Chargers podcast. First, though, I do need to tell you guys about Game Time because Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you're going to have. One of the things that I love to do is just scrolling Game Time to see what's going on in my area, to see what last-second concerts I could potentially go to, and to give you the truly best deals to save you truly the most money. You can even buy tickets to an event an hour after it begins. That means if you really like a band but and you don't really care about the openers and you see that last second, you're going to get a great deal and you're still going to get to see the band that you want even an hour into when that concert is starting. You get the best price all the time with game time. And you always know what you're paying up front. And they also have the zone deals where you pick a section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account, use the code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, David, well, it's time to get into our Chargers buy or sell here because we love to get into the biggest storylines and overreactions on Tuesdays, and there's a lot of really good ones, stuff that could be leading shows we talked about, including. The possibility of Mike Williams coming back, right? This is something I know, especially since Keenan Allen left. I know right when he was released, it didn't feel like there was any chance that Mike Williams would be back. But now the Chargers have a lot more cap space than they did when we first thought that, right? So the buy or sell today is this. Mike Williams is not coming back. Yeah, as much as as it pains me to say, uh, I'm going to buy it. And and the reason why is because... There's no shortage of suitors for Mike Williams' services. According to Ian Rappaport, the former Chargers wide receiver has visit scheduled this week with the Panthers, the New York Jets, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And all of those teams could utilize the skill set that yeah. Mike Williams brings to the table. Obviously, uh, a couple of those teams, you know, with, with the Jets, you know, you're hoping to, to get Aaron Rodgers back in, in full health and having Aaron Rodgers uh, pa- matched up with a, a, a wide receiver that can really go up and get it in a 90 10 type of guy. That would be very exciting. The Carolina Panthers adding a weapon for their young quarterback, uh, a guy who can really make things happen, uh, especially when uh, he, he's not the best at escaping sacks. Hopefully he can throw it up to Mike Williams and Mike can go make some plays as we've seen him do so many times. And and the Steelers, you know, are just needing to add more weapons in general. I think uh, e- any one of those teams could con- con- conceivably sign Mike Williams, and uh, I just don't think that there's any way – uh, that the Chargers would be able to bring him back. Yeah, and the thing is, is like how much is he willing to not get paid to come back to the Chargers, right? Like you only save twenty, or you save twenty million, not only twenty million, but yeah. like, are you going to re-sign him for fifteen million and save five million dollars on the Mike Williams? Like, I mean, technically, it's it, it's theoretically possible, right? But it just doesn't make a lot of sense, especially if you wanted to do that. Why would he be going and taking all these other visits? Like, is there a chance that he could go to all three of those places and none of them meet what he wants and what his demands are and he comes back to the Chargers because it's where he's familiar? Sure. Is it likely? Absolutely not. So I'm buying the fact that he's not going to be back. And I think, obviously, you'd feel a lot better if he was because he's at least shown that he can be a borderline wide receiver one, right? The last fully healthy season he had, 76 catches, 1,146 yards, and nine touchdowns. And used a lot more differently too, Dan. Yeah, and I think the thing is, is that was wide receiver one, right? And last year, we were seeing him kind of put up borderline wide receiver one numbers before he got hurt. And Josh Palmer feels a lot better as a wide receiver, too. Like, he might be getting a little disrespected as far as, you know, hey, how we talk about him and just, you know, the lack of having Mike Williams and Keenan Allen because there is a gap between those two players and Josh Palmer. Josh Palmer is super solid. I think Josh Palmer can be a wide receiver, too. But who is your wide receiver one? At least with Mike Williams, you feel like you could have someone that's close to that. 
I agree. Yeah, Mike Williams is definitely a, a bona fide wide receiver one in this you know landscape of the Chargers wide receiver room. Well, he's and, at least a hell of a lot closer to it than anyone the Chargers have right now, right? He's yeah. your best chance of having a wide receiver one of anyone that you can reasonably get right now. Right, and, and unlike you know the beginning part of his career where he was really just a throw it up and go up and get it type of receiver, he was used a lot more uh, effectively, a lot different the last couple of seasons where they did move him into the slot. They did move him around. They tried to get the matchups, and they, and they tried to change the type of routes that he would run so he's not just effective in the deep part of the field. They were trying to give him more yards after catch opportunities as well, and that was something that I feel like he did pretty well with. So uh, yeah. just you know giving more opportunities for him to be featured uh, I think was a good thing for Mike Williams and why he was still very productive for the Chargers at the same time it's not all bad that he doesn't come back because part of the reason the Chargers haven't done what they want to do the last couple of seasons is because they had a ton of money tied up in Mike Williams and he missed 18 games out of those two years right the Chargers yeah. are getting younger they're getting faster more explosive Mike Williams is a guy whose game doesn't age well at least physically as far as thinking he's going to be much healthier going forward I don't think I wouldn't say he's injury prone he's played through a lot but it's for you know it's 18 games over the last two years that's in incredibly risky for you to put a giant portion yeah, like of your of remaining season. salary yeah. cap you don't have that much right like it looks good right now or what percentage of that are you willing to spend on someone like mike williams instead of you know trying to keep taking a targeted approach like we'll talk about in free agency and trying to fill as many needs as you possibly can they desperately need wide receiver help but Mike Williams probably isn't the answer. Let's get to this, though, because big reason why we're even having this conversation is because the Chargers traded Keenan Allen, which was crazy. We didn't like the move at the time. But the buy or sell today is this, David. The Chargers got fair compensation for their star receiver, Keenan Allen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to sell it. And and the reason why I'm going to sell it is a, a couple of examples that I was able to look up. I was looking for trades involving receivers that are right around the age of 30 that were bona fide superstar wide receivers because that's exactly what Keenan Allen was. So the first one of those was, you know, the Steelers trading uh, Antonio Brown, uh, who was 30 at the time, and he was coming off of 104, 1297, you know, 104 catch. Uh, 1,297 yard season where he scored over 15 touchdowns. He was traded to the Raiders for a third and a fifth round pick. Okay. And then another trade that comes to mind is the Julio Jones trade where the Falcons traded uh, Julio Jones and a sixth rounder to the Titans for a second and a fourth round pick. So, you know, Keenan Allen provided production that was on par with Antonio Brown and that superseded what Julio Jones did when he was traded. So for me, I always thought it was a little bit light on the compensation. Uh, and I think just given the context of these two particular moves here, I I'm reinforced in that belief. I feel like it should have been a fourth and maybe something else. You know, uh, if you threw in a sixth in, in there, I think I would have filled felt better about that type of trade but yeah I don't feel like it was enough for Keenan Allen I agree and the thing is, is you can only get as much as someone's willing to offer you right because that's a big part of it I mean you it can, is. We can say you know it wasn't fair all it wasn't it's how much were you willing to take before you just said hey I'm going to keep him because he's yeah. worth more to me this year than a fourth round pick and to me that's more what it's about and that's why yeah. I'm going to sell it because I just think that his production this year and potentially the year after that whatever the that would have been potentially with an extension is worth more than a fourth round pick is because I think it severely hurts your offense this year. I think it yeah. hurts your chances this year as far as what you're going to do. And if you have a chance to make the playoffs and things like that this year, because he was such a big part of your offense that yeah. you have to replace now and also adding on, you know, Gerald Everett and Austin Eckler and Mike Williams. So to lose all those guys, but to still have Keenan Allen, you know, wouldn't feel nearly as bad as this. I think the thing with those two other receivers is, is both of those dudes within, you know, a year, a year and a half of when they got traded, were bona fide number one receiver in the league, maybe best receiver in the league, right? So maybe that bought a little bit more pedigree. Obviously, Julio Jones missed games before that, but also had six straight seasons of 1,394 yards or more. So yeah. we're not exactly talking the same exact level. Keenan Allen right. is a borderline top 10 receiver. Both of those dudes were borderline number one and number two receivers in the league good very recently before they got traded. So yeah. I understand why it's not as good as those guys, but it definitely feels like it should have been a hell of a lot closer. This is the other part of it. Like I said, you can only get what someone's willing to give. And the Texans, according to Aaron Wilson, were close to getting Keenan Allen, but wanted a t or wanted to give a 2025 third round pick instead of a 2024 fourth round pick like the Chargers got. Real quick, David, buy or sell. The Chargers should have taken the Texans' 2025 third round pick instead of the Bears' 
fourth round pick this year, 110th overall. Absolutely not. I, I want the compensation for pe- someone that can help me this year, and I don't want any part of trading Keenan Allen to a, an, another AFC team, period. Yeah, and that, that's what we talked about before the show. You know, it's like, it, obviously, that's a report. I believe it. But then you're trading him in your conference. You're trading him to a team that was just in the playoffs. You're trading him to a team that's going to be right there as far as competing for you, potentially for a wild card spot if they don't win the AFC South, right? So I think that makes a big difference. I wouldn't want to see Keenan Allen on my schedule if I was the Chargers and have a chance to run into him in the playoffs. I just wouldn't, right, with the Texans. I would rather take the fourth this year than as far as what they got now if you're saying hey if it's a future second round pick plus something else maybe that's a different conversation you're setting yourself up more for the future 2025 third for a team who's probably going to be pretty good in the texans would be even better if they had keenan allen so you're talking about probably a pretty late third as opposed to a pretty early fourth that you got this year from the bears and you know exactly where it is so i would sell that as well but we do have more to get into including are the chargers making really smart moves this free agency i know that it's been underwhelming for a lot of people, but I'm pretty bullish on what the Chargers have been able to get done. We'll also talk about new linebacker Troy Dyan, if he has a chance to start, and more on today's Locked on Chargers podcast. First, I have to tell you guys about Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with that 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com boost. Subscription fees apply. And now, some legal info. Claim as Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. David, there's a lot more buyer sales I want to get into here, including how the Chargers have handled free agency and taking a quick snapshot of the moves that they've made so far and buying or selling if the Chargers have made the smart moves so far in free agency. But I do want to tell everyone to make sure they're checking out Locked On Sports Today, the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel, giving you coverage of every sport with local experts the way that only the Locked On local experts can give you and the everydayers all know that. And we appreciate you guys, as always, for coming back to check out today's show. But... Let's get to this one here, David, because it's something that you brought up as far as a potential buy or sell today, and it was just about what the Chargers have done on the whole in free agency so far. And so the buy or sell is this. The Chargers have made very smart moves so far in free agency. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. I think they've been very prudent with the moves that they've made. Uh, Obviously, they haven't had a ton of money to spend. They were never going to go big game hunting. That was not going to be the approach in this offseason. But what they have done has been very intentional, and it has been very impactful. I I think that it's going to be. So they bring in Gus Edwards, uh, a bigger running back that has familiarity in the system. They get one of the best run-blocking tight ends in the league in Will Disley. They bring in a, a receiving option at tight end with Hayden Hurst. And then they get Bradley Bozeman uh, and, and a center where these are all positions that the Chargers needed to add quality people to, and they were able to do it. And then on the defensive side, they add Puna Ford on the defensive line. They get Denzel Perriman at linebacker, and they're able to also bring in Troy Dye, who is going to probably play some linebacker and also help you on special teams. You just look at every single one of these moves, and you say, okay, I understand why they made this move. This move makes sense, and these moves are going to help the team. So I feel like... This has been a very high quality approach when you haven't had a lot of money, but you've been very smart with the money that you have spent. Yeah, and also bringing back Alohi Gilman, right? Getting yes, that safety Alohi spot, Gilman. you know, re-signing him and, and filling that starting role beca- before it becomes a giant hole. And I mean, just look at it. You filled major holes at running back, tight end, linebacker, defensive tackle, safety, backup quarterback. Those are all places you needed to have someone. And I think when I look at this free agency, this is what I think about. I think about Tom Telesco and just all of, you know, the very home run or strikeout mentality. He either absolutely yeah. crushed a pick or it was a total failure. And not only was it a total failure, but it screwed the Chargers in years going forward as well. A la 
J.C. Jackson, yeah. a la Brian Bulaga or Chris Harris Jr. And all these yeah. dudes, by the time they got to the end of these contracts, yeah, were Orlando absolutely Franklin. sucking the Chargers dry, right? Yeah. Because they were not being able to play, not good enough to play in seasons the Chargers had them contracted. The Chargers are not setting themselves up for future failure. These guys might not work, some of them, right? But what it isn't going to do is it isn't going to hamper the Chargers' 2025 cap space. Because the only guy we're talking about here that's even a, a factor in there are the two guys, right? Will Disley, right? We got Will Disley, Gus Edwards, and Aloe Gilman. Yeah. That's it, right? So, like, when you're looking at this, it's, it's very low-risk, high-reward type of signings and also very targeted towards the needs that you have. Did the Chargers have their starters in all those positions necessarily? No. Did they have full-time, long-term players at those? No. But what they're doing is they're finding very – they're hitting a lot of singles. It's yeah. not all home runs or strikeouts, yeah. right? There's some singles in there that could be doubles. Will Disley could easily outplay that contract. Gus Edwards could easily outplay that contract, right? Denzel Perriman for $3 million when other linebackers are getting seven and a half plus, so yeah. many of them. All of those guys have a chance to way outplay what they're signing for. So when I'm looking at this, yes, there's not the big names that you want, right? But what did the big names get you before? Nothing. The best signings Nothing. of Tom Telesco were always the coupon signings. Yeah. And Joe Horty said he was going to be active and creative. That's what he's done. It would feel a lot better if you still had Keenan Allen, right? But don't let the Keenan Allen trade affect how you feel about free agency. Because even if, and you know, all these guys, you could find flaws in their games. Sure. They're not even necessarily going to be starters in some of these cases, right? But what they're getting is at least very quality depth, which is what we've all been screaming for from the yes. mountaintops for several years now. Yes. So, like, I love what they've done so far. You can't hold the Keenan Allen, uh, you know, against what they've done in free agency, at least except for, like, the timing and, and doing it sooner and being able to have more money. Yeah. But, man, there's not a single like signing here without I'm like oh this is going to be a disaster because they're not even going to have a chance to be because right. they're short term they're low money and I really like what they've been able to do including bringing in Troy Dye because he is a linebacker slash special teamer who has time with the Vikings and Ryan Ficken but what I want to know is this David we know he's a special team player but I would say this too outside of Denzel Perriman there's a lot of snaps that feel very much up for grabs right now in this Chargers defense. So this is the buy or sell. New linebacker Troy Dye will have a chance to start at linebacker this season. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to buy it. And the reason why I'm going to buy it is because even though he's only been in the league for four years, he has more snaps on defense than Dan Henley and Nick Neiman combined. <laughs> So that and that's, that's not saying that's not saying a whole lot. He doesn't have very many. Yeah. Right. It's 409 yeah. snaps across four seasons, and his highest tackle total was his rookie season, where he was able to notch 26 tackles. But we're talking about Nick Neiman, who had 322 snaps, 43 tackles. Although one thing that's great for Nick Neiman, only one missed tackle, only one missed tackle on defense. That's pretty spectacular. You're saying last year or for his entire no, career? For his entire career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, which is insane for Nick Neiman. So that that's that, that was really cool to kind of see that. And then Dayon, only 54 snaps, uh, 10 tackles in those 54 snaps. So <laughs> yeah. very active for sure. I mean, and, and I think that's what we expect out of Dayon. I want to see Dayon on the field for sure. I, I feel like his skill set is one that can definitely translate uh, and it can be very effective, especially in coverage. I feel like he has the makings of a three down linebacker to me, but competition is good. I want to see who is going to rise to the top. I want to see who is going to be the best player to pair with Denzel Perriman to be out there on Sundays and let's figure it out. Let's see who it is. And not only that, David, you want to know going into it that your coaching staff is going to play the dude who deserves to play. That's yeah. another big part of it, right? It and the is. only reason we're bringing this up, and I would buy it as well, is because Ian Rapport, when he first reported the signing several days ago about a Troy Dye, and also <laughs> we're dumb because we didn't even bring up Troy Dye yesterday because it wasn't official technically yet when we talked about the linebacker situation in Denzel Perriman, but he does factor into it, right? And Ian Rapport said this, linebacker and special teamer Troy Dye is signing with the Chargers on a one-year deal. Minnesota wanted him back, but Dye will have a chance to play more of a role on the defense in L.A. So that means at least as part of him coming – was the promise, you're going to get a chance for it. So that's why I'm 100% buying it. At the very, very least, as you brought up, is a replacement for Amen Abom Bamiga, our boy Bong. Yeah. Good luck and best of luck to you. At the very least, he's that. I think yeah. he's also, we know Denzel Perriman's kind of a rotational player and has sure. his limits as well. So I think there's going to be a lot of sub packages with some of these guys. Troy Dye is a, an athletic linebacker that I remember scouting only a few years ago when he was coming out of Oregon, right? Also has a friendliness with Justin Herbert as well. Definitely like that. But yeah. I do think that 
I'm not expecting a ton for him defensively. And I think that Dayon Henley will beat him out eventually as far as who's getting the most snaps here. But part of why you wanted Jim Harbaugh was because you don't play favorites and the best guys, right? The best players, not the best names, are going to play. And that's what I think stays that way with uh, with Troy Dye because I think this is someone, you know, if he plays, he's going to get his chance. If he yeah. plays well enough, he's going to get a chance to have a role on this defense. So I think, you know, a lot of stuff still up in the air. But another signing that I like because, you know, if Ryan Ficken wants him, <laughs> you have carte blanche with me. Absolutely. Go get whoever you want. <laughs> he wanted him. He got him, and he'll have a chance to earn his way onto the defense as well. But, David, that's going to wrap things up for today's show. I'm thinking about doing Chargers mailbag tomorrow. We still have some questions from last week, but if you guys want to hit us up, do it at Lockdown LAC or in David Drogemeyer's DMs at Drotalk SD. You can also hit me up at Dan Talk Sports. We also, everywhere you can find us on social media and you can find the show, you can also ask us your question, like on Instagram at Lockdown Chargers and our Lockdown Chargers Facebook page as well. To make sure you never miss the shows like bangers like this episode was, make sure you go subscribe or follow for free on the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. But make sure, most importantly, you're back here tomorrow. Call into the voicemail line if you want to at 323-524-7924 and get your 30-second voicemail in. And we should have a ton of fun. But until then, guys, take it easy and go Bolts.